This week we're going to have a look at the PlayStation 2 Linux kit. Uh, it was sold by Sony in uh, the early noughties. Uh, contained a network adapter, um, a PlayStation 2 VGA adapter, a keyboard, a mouse, um, and a hard disk. And of course a copy of the software. Uh, so I'm going to take you quickly through setting up the hardware and installing the software. Enjoy! Alright, the first thing we'll do is take my games disk off the network adapter. As you can see, nothing special there, just power and an IDE plug. So onto that. I'm going to put this 80 gig drive one of those drives that doesn't fit. Damn. I'm going to use a different brand of disc with connectors that fit just right. And just take the PlayStation there, slide it on in, do the screws up. So now we have a PS2 with a hard disk installed and the next thing to do obviously is to connect it up. To connect PlayStation to a monitor we use this accessory which is the Sony VGA adapter. Um, you have to use a monitor that supports sync on green. Um, most high-end monitors do. Um, at the time when this was out uh, there were lots of sort of consumer monitors and cheap monitors that didn't. This is the runtime environment. This is the first disc that you put in, and this is what boots up the PlayStation into the Linux uh, environment. Okay, so the runtime environment has started. This is the one very small part of the procedure where you need to use a controller to pick between these options here. We just want to use the install option. Now it's saying we need a memory card, a USB keyboard and a hard disk to install. That's fine. So change disks. We actually change disks twice here. Uh, we change it once now and then change it back again. And then we change it back a second time once we're actually installing the software. We're finally in Linux. As you can see, it's Linux 2.2. It's pretty old. Okay, and we change discs again for the last time. Partition the disc here. Nothing really fancy. The video card that it's detected there, GS, stands for Graphics Synthesizer, which is the PlayStation 2's graphics chip. Okay, so now it's asking to create a boot memory card, and what the memory card contains is the kernel and a configuration file that the system needs to boot. So 
So it wants us to put disc one back in. We'll go ahead and do that. Okay, the uh, installation process is finished, so I'm just going to fire it up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is the pre-boot environment. I guess what you would call the, the bootloader. Um, so, I've got a couple of options here. Let's just go ahead and boot it up. This is the stuff that it installs to the memory card, uh, so it lets you you can add it, entries to here if you want to have, you know, several Linux operating systems installed on your hard disk. So there's, uh, here it just shows the kernel and what is going to be the root device. Pretty straightforward, um, pretty standard stuff if you're used to dealing with Linux. So let's go ahead and boot this up. Go ahead and log in as root. So there are no other accounts created yet. Hopefully it's gonna fix, there we go. And we'll start the graphical environment. And here we go. So we have a selection of things that can change our language, we can change the input method, and we can pick from a bunch of different window managers here. I'm going to go ahead with FBWM2 and log in here. Pretty old version of FVWM, so uh, here we go. Root menu, so not a lot gets installed. It's um, the environment on here is more about development than sort of desktop use, so there's not much. There's a copy on here of the GIMP, I think. Maybe that's not installed, uh, but there's a terminal here. So that's the hardware and software setup for the PlayStation 2 Linux kit. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's a bit boring, I know, not really game related or whatever, but I thought it was a bit, bit neat, but a little bit retro. Um, if there's anything that anybody wants me to try on the PS2, just uh, leave a comment or whatever, um, and I'll see what I can do. See you next time.